hello all welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are doing well i am doing well this is a video i've been planning to make for you all for a long time because i think it will be very useful especially if you are about to build a house or you are thinking about extending your house or you are thinking about just building in the countryside especially in south africa because we're building in rural areas my goal here is to save you a little bit of money and really help you avoid some of the pitfalls that i went into not knowing so hopefully when you build your own house you'll be a little bit more confident and careful about decisions that you are making so i wanted to share this video with you all and i hope that you will enjoy it and not only that if you're not building in south africa you might find these uh tips useful as well as some of you know i am building a house in rural south africa a five bedroom house with five bathrooms and it's got a pantry a sunroom it's got a mudroom a laundry room a formal living room a family room and a kitchen and uh and a pajama lounge and all the bedrooms have end suites and they also have walk-in closets and these uh, tips will be helpful to you whether really you're building a double story or a single story some tips might be you know like uh general to everyone but the focus since i'm building my house in south africa the focus will be on what i've learned basically so i hope you guys are doing well i'm doing very well thank you um i had to take care of business today and so because of that i had to put on some makeup and as a result i was like i'm not wasting this makeup it's very neutral because i was um i, I had a business meeting but yeah uh, i hope you guys are doing well so i'm going to give you guys tips uh basically so and i'm going to go through you know all of them okay now let's go <laughs> the number one tip i want to talk about is uh what to do before you ever start building okay so depending on the size of your house uh most houses don't require an engineer but if you're going to build a double story you need to make sure you consult an engineer depending on the size of your house you may need or you may not need a structural engineer okay a civil engineer um but if you're building a double story i advise that you get a civil engineer it will save you a lot of headaches a lot of money yes it will be upfront cost but i think they will be worth it and not only that you need to make sure that the structural or civil engineer is someone who can come and monitor the work okay uh, but if you're building a small house you may not need a, a structural engineer if you're building a, a very small house especially a single story you definitely may not need a uh, structural engineer but if you're building on a cliff or on a sloped lot at that point i think you sort of like building a double story and therefore you need to make sure that you get a structural engineer and uh, and i'm advising this to be honest with you because in my case uh, you know that i'm building on a very slow plot and i didn't know that and the mistake that i did was to allow the guy to be the one who makes the decisions as to a lot of things that had to do with the structure of the house and that was a huge mistake i didn't involve a um a structural engineer like until i was almost on the second floor okay and that's when i and it was too late at that point the reason why you want to do that there's something called the superstructure of the house okay again remember when i built my house i built my house having no experience i just designed the house and i said this is what i want and i had to learn a lot of things on the fly and most of the time when you learn you've already made the mistakes right and so to avoid that make sure that you involve a structural engineer from the from the beginning and not only that when you build a monolith slope i would say rather than in my case we literally could have made a basement having a basement would have 
saved me a lot of money to be honest with you and not only that it would have made sure that my house was literally above the ground right now my house is kind of below and i'm missing the sunset which is something that i absolutely love yes i get a beautiful sunrise but i would have loved to get both the sunset and the sunrise and i can't get the sunset because the guy dug out my uh, like for the foundation of my house he dug so much trying to get to the bedrock and when he did that he inadvertently put my house pretty much on the ground which is the reason why i had to do the wall that you see in front of the house just to, so that things are a little bit level in front of the house and my house is not you know like literal on the ground i still have a lot of uh like groundwork that i need to do like to uh level my my lot basically and i will be using a lot of terraces to do that um and uh so that you know like we have different flat levels that's my goal ultimately but that is something that could have been totally avoided because what that would mean um uh, is instead of my house like being underground would have a basement and that basement we could have literally used it to make sure that we put all the plumbing pipes a lot of electrical stuff under there we could have it could have been a very useful space that's what they do a lot of times in america in america they don't run like waste pipes and stuff like that on the foundation itself they go they go underground and then they come up where they need to come up and so we literally could have done that but again because i was in a hurry i was in a hurry to finish the house <laughs> i made a lot of mistakes and the guy was clearly not experienced in building big houses like mine but he again made it look like he could right and i went with him but it was a big mistake so that brings me to my next tip when it comes to electricity make sure that you have a game plan before you get started okay um the reason being that you will save a lot of money in making sure that your electricity is built into the slab where it needs to be built in or it's built into the walls where it needs to be uh, inside the walls um and i say this because we had to do a lot of chasing and the guys basically put me on the hook for uh all the materials that had to do with chasing and they were going through discs like they were stealing them okay that brings me to another topic um uh again and i'm saying this because when i was doing my um when we when the guys were doing my electricity okay uh first of all they were going through materials like nobody's business and i couldn't account for them i couldn't account for the materials the money i spent on electric stuff is probably uh around 200k so you already know look who's here anyway uh, i have to pick him up otherwise i can't do anything uh but anyway so the people at the hardware store they asked me uh are you building a mall <laughs> that's what they asked me because i was buying so much electrical stuff the only thing that i could account for there were plugs and even then i had to keep a short leash on them make sure that you know like they nothing will go missing okay yes there were few things that were missing but not to a point where the way they were using the wires the wires it was crazy how much wiring they were using every day they were asking for wiring which i thought was very strange and i truly believe i truly believe that it's because they were stealing the stuff so my tip would be never give your electricians everything they need at once okay have them take whatever wires they need to use for today and they should show you exactly where they've put them okay before you give them another one and also every time you should give them what they need what they're going to use at the time because that's where thievery and theft comes from okay and again i couldn't prove that other than if i were to say okay i bought this many meters of by the way i bought thousands of meters of wires and unless i i i i would have said 
okay you account exactly how many meters you've used here and now they had this new thing of saying oh no 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 that had a factory fault always there was a factory fault and i'm thinking to myself these people think i'm stupid but i was like whatever let's just do it but again my electricity because i was there didn't cost as much as it could have cost if i was not there you see what i'm saying but it was still way too much way more than i expected to be honest with you keep everything in check make sure that everything is in check okay otherwise you're going to be paying like nobody's business um so that would be my tip to you give them what they need and then put away the rest and then so that every time they need something they come to you okay that's another thing okay so another advice that i would like to give you is when you are hiring people when you are hiring people you have to have a contract some form of a contract it doesn't have to be you know like because they don't read the contracts the contracts are for you really they don't read the contracts when you are building make sure that you have a contract with the person that was going to be doing building and also you have to decide on the stages at what stage are you going to pay okay but also make sure that they understand that you will pay when that stage is finished because a lot of them what they do especially the plastering guys this is what they did they try to do the easy things so that it looks like they did a lot of work but ultimately the work that needed to be done was there was still a lot of work like windows and doors and stuff like that that's more work than just doing walls and not only that uh these people become very they're very greedy and become very aggressive when they want that money because they all they care about is money really so what i would say to you is have that contract down and but may be prepared to pay for their food until they get to that point because the reason why you have to do that because you they can work on an empty stomach right um and your job is to at least make sure that you provide for them so that they can eat but you put everything down you have them sign you give them updates on a daily basis if you're not paying for their food if you pay for their food i wouldn't do that and i've never done that the reason being that i don't give uh, all my contracts always had in my mind what a daily labor should be and what i considered you know like money for food and other living expenses for them that would be money that i pay on top of that the reason is when i was uh like working with uh, some of these people if money for food came out of their own pockets they were very careful and didn't waste anything but if you were buying they would just go crazy and want to eat and eat and eat but i would make sure that they have the food uh, i would tell them give me a list of things that you need if you need a stove and all those things the pots and stuff like that you do you okay and the reason being that even me and my job i get paid what i get paid and i don't get separate money for food you understand what i'm saying so but i always made sure that i was paying them more than enough more than what they needed so that they can have money for food but if they were wasteful that was not on me okay and i will make an example one of the guys like they were uh making their own food all along but because they took longer than they expected i became very lenient towards them i said okay i'll provide you guys have about a week left i'll provide you food uh, out of my own pocket but i all i ask is that you guys be finished at least by a certain date and guess what they were doing these people were eating cabbage and uh and 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 stiff papa and oil and uh beast most of the time if they ate their chicken they made sure that they were very careful as soon as i started cooking for them really i went and bought them food and i said here's the food within two days like five cages gone <laughs> you know like 10 cages gone i'm like okay wait a minute you guys are abusing uh, abusing me this is not what you did when you were cooking for yourself and now because i'm the one providing food you were wasting food that's just not right because i was literally just being nice i don't want you guys to go into your own money like to to basically because i always want when they go home to live with something so that they feel like they've earned something you see what i'm saying that was always my goal um and so yeah but anyway 
so that would be my advice make sure that you know like you give them money for food so they can cook for themselves and then they can be as careful as they need to be so let's go into the walls okay when it comes to the walls i would say make sure that uh you use 200 i think it's 200 but there are different sizes of blocks if you're going to use blocks there are different sizes i would say always go with the biggest size and the reason being that you still have things like you know insect screens in my case everybody should get an insect screen okay insect screen because you need to keep the flies out of your house you don't want to be in your house and and flies you can't even enjoy wine that was my biggest pet peeve when i was in south africa that was my uh like you know like i absolutely they were so distracting and i hated it so i, I would um put like i uh, use doom or something like that and leave the house for a little bit and then quickly come in when i feel like the doom has subsided and then i would pour myself wine and i'll be sitting enjoying my wine and then i look up on the ceiling and there's a fly sitting there relaxing like and i'll be so annoyed um because i don't want my you know like as a result i had to learn to literally have you know like something to cover my glass but the point here that i'm making is make sure that you have on your walls room for your window room for your your burglar bar uh, make sure that you have a place for your screen so because you need three things uh on your window opening so having thick walls is beneficial okay and another thing that i would say make sure that the person who's doing foundation is extremely extremely careful when it comes to measuring one of the things issues that i faced consistently in that house was that the house was not perfectly square okay and to me that is one of the biggest biggest issues that i faced in that house make sure that your house is measured 100 percent um i had to come in and measure myself <laughs> i did i literally had to i had to bring my you know standard five geometry um to the building because a lot of the people that were building for me didn't care about those details right and i didn't actually realize this until the foundation was completely done and as you know my foundation is massive and not only is it massive we had uh like uh 30 mpa mpa those who don't know it's the strength of your cement so we use the bridge uh bridge level i guess uh mpa you can you can do 15 25 depending on you know like on how uh and i mean it's not a huge difference in terms of price it's just that it's just more strength um to the higher the mpa so but the point i wanted to make is that because we had uh, done the slab first like the ground slab when we actually started putting the walls we realized that the house was not square hence you see the little like things on the wall where i have um i don't even know how to uh like basically the foundation the house itself is not straight with the foundation but we had to create the square when it came to the walls because at this point i was there measuring making sure that we are measuring correctly because the guys that were building walls started and they they were i don't know whether they didn't know how to read their plan or i oh I think I know why. The guy, the first guy who did the foundation mismeasured a lot. So that kind of threw them off. And I had to come in as a person who understands the plan very well and, and who drew the plan, by the way. I had to come in and say, okay, let's make these executive decisions. And we're able to make the decisions in the house is what you see today. So it was helpful that I was there. Imagine if I was not in South Africa, it would have been a, an epic disaster. So we're able to, uh, yes, uh, not do things perfectly, but at least we were able to salvage the house. Okay. Uh, so yeah, th that's, that would be my advice. And another thing is, since we're talking about civil, civil engineering, another thing that I would advise is buy your reinforcement bars, uh, from a factory rather than, you know, like from a place like, 
uh, what are these like stealing pipes and all these places yes if you need a small amount of those things yes please by all means go and buy from them because most factories won't sell you if you don't need like as much as i needed so i was able to buy my reinforcement bars from uh from a, a factory and that saved me actually a, a bit of money so if you're able to do that do go ahead and do that uh but again the value of structural engineer here uh it will you will only buy what you need rather than in my case where we were just buying and buying and buying so yeah it would have saved me a ton of money to go with a structural engineer from the beginning and even though it's a decision that came in late it's a decision that i cherish when it comes to hiring people there's really no there's really no no silver bullet here because you think you've done due diligence as you some of you know um there was a guy um that i paid 135k to for my windows and the guy was an epic disaster oh my gosh so what i'm trying to get to here when you want to buy things or i should say in this case when you think one things that are custom okay i would advise you to go with different companies in other words, if you're going to be doing windows, doors, and garage doors and stuff, go to different people, divide and conquer as much as you can. That way, if one person screws up, you're at least safe with the rest of your money because not everybody can screw up. So I went to a brick and mortar store and I went to, when I, when I arrived in South Africa, I went and checked the store and I found out that the store was being, was there. And so I, I, I willingly, uh, you know, released my money to this guy. And um, from the beginning, he was giving me a Marvelletona in Corsa. He was giving me the, like, stories after stories. Oh, we're almost done. We're working all weekend. Blah, 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 blah. But he was never delivering. He was not delivering at all. And that was the biggest issue that I faced with this phase it derailed so many things it derailed so many things it cost me so much because even the plastering people were so frustrated because the doors were not there windows were not there and so had i known uh, that this guy was basically going to go to different stores and try to buy and when he couldn't buy uh, based on the prices that he gave me he just gave me what he thought he should be giving me even in that case still like everything was so expensive and not only that all the expensive things uh he did not deliver so i had to go pay for someone else for my doors he literally gave me the worst experience when it comes to plastering uh there's really not much here other than to say um make sure that the people who are doing plastering are really correcting any issues and not only that you need to hold them accountable because a lot of them as i said they do the easy things and then want most of the money when they did the easy things and then you are left with a problem because now you have to find someone else who's gonna do the hard work but there's little money left so if they do the easy things like you know like the walls and no windows and stuff like that you need to keep the majority of the money but more importantly make sure that they do a thorough job that way you don't have to go back and do crack filling and all these things that are very expensive because now you have to have labor for crack filling and you have to have labor for uh, painting again so all these things you can avoid by making sure that like as soon as you see a problem point it out okay they won't like it uh a lot of them were emotional wrecks okay but we'll get into that in just a sec speaking of like the people so i'm the kind of person i'm the kind of person who you know like isn't afraid of anyone and i'm rolling my eyes because i am afraid of violence because i'm not a violent person i'm intelligent enough to use my words i'm talking to you builders out there who threaten people uh i uh i and i know that in south africa there is no uh like if you call the police you're wasting your time you're wasting your time somebody once said that um uh, so you're wasting your time to call the police 
uh, it's very difficult to find the police. In America, you call the police, they come here with guns blazing within five minutes. In America, you call the police, guns blazing, they are coming here with firemen, everyone, if you call feeling threatened. So, but yeah, uh, uh, so because of that, I, uh, like, uh, as I said, I'm not scared of anyone. I feel like I, and I respect everyone, and people think being nice is you are weak, and they interpret it that way. So a lot of people thought I'm a weak person because I'm a very nice person. <laughs> and so, um, and I know you're not supposed to toot your own horn, but I am in this case because that was the experience that I had. Like in America, contracts mean something. So I know if I'm making a promise to pay someone, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to say I'm going to pay you and not pay you. I paid a lot of people who didn't deserve to get paid, uh, but I paid them sometimes to get rid of them, okay? And pay them off basically. And so like what I would suggest is if you are able to get a middleman, get your own middleman, but hopefully it will be someone who is who respects you enough, who is not corrupt, because some people might be speaking on your behalf, but they're making deals behind your back. OK, so you want someone who's going to look out for you, who you trust. Have that person, preferably a man, because culturally, again, we're still very uh, weird. <laughs> I mean, that's the only word I can come up with, because, um, like, as a woman, especially in the construction industry where you're dealing with men, you you really want to have a very scary man, be your middle man. And your job is to make sure that that scary man is... Um, is is really looking out for you they discuss things with you and you basically really be a reasonable person i'm not saying you should use that person to as a shield not to take care of your own responsibility i'm saying that you should use that person really to be a buffer between you and the people so that they know fortunately i'm building in my own village so i had a lot of cousins that i had to call up actually uh, because like some of these men were threatening my life literally and when I called the police I couldn't get through which like one of those things that back home we need to fix because it's infuriating to know that you are a law abiding person but you can't get any help because the police either don't save your area or whatever or they are too um, they have other more important things to deal with and it's almost like they say until they do something bad to you there's nothing we can do you see what i'm saying so yeah make sure at least you have someone that you can trust and make sure that that person is the one that they communicate with you through okay in my case it was very difficult because i lived there in the in the you know like in my guest house and not only did i live there i saw them every day and they knew like you know even though i did not take anything lying down i did not I did not uh, I did not um, and so but yeah I would advise uh, that you do that here's another advice this is something nice so a lot of these guys were cooking for themselves and I made sure that you know like they had the food that they needed to have in order for them to continue to work so I would always have a snack uh, because a lot of them would work pretty much all day I would have snacks like apples or you know like or even candy i mean sweets uh like uh i would uh i would have that for them uh anything that can just sustain them until they go back and cook because i didn't cook for myself so i really didn't have an opportunity to cook for them the only time uh, i would cook for them only if we have let's say something a get together or whatever or anything that you know like uh where we had enough food for everyone i would always call all the people who work for me to come and, and eat there and i would tell them ahead of time that we're going to do this if you want to come and join us you're more than welcome and we'd give them plates so that was just my way of saying i truly appreciate what you guys are doing i know i pay you guys but i know even if i do pay you you could use some help so that was just my way of being nice to them really to build trust so one last tip I will give is budgeting, okay? This should have been the first tip. Budgeting, when it comes to budgeting, I think you truly want to 
uh, make sure that you double at least you double your budget and the reason being that um there will be unforeseen things there will be costs that you can account for and if you are on a very very tight budget you will be very frustrated um and not only that people when like in my case i'm building a very big house so people and people a lot of times know that i live in america so they think that they can waste uh, my money that i have an unlimited amount of money um all those thoughts go into the demeanor and the behavior that they display right and uh and so so even though i'm there to make sure that there's not a lot of waste waste will happen because they think that oh there's more where that came from uh and so what i would say is make sure that for materials you at least double your budget at least double your budget for me i had to quadruple my budget okay and uh and so because of that you just want to make sure that you have enough money for all those unforeseen costs especially if you're supplying your staff right if you're supplying your staff make sure that you have the money to travel you have the money for delivery you have the money for like to buy food you know like and to make sure that you have enough deposit to make sure that you at least cover you know like this the initial money for them until they get paid and so uh, all those things are absolutely important. Um, one of the unforeseen things for me was the little daily labors. Like, you know, I needed people to clean. I needed people to put away stuff and all those things because ugh, I was constantly on the road, you know, like buying stuff and doing all these things. By the way, um, I would say if someone is able to stop supply you let them supply you but make sure that the material that they are supplying you with is good quality material part of why i didn't want to be supplied with a lot of things is because i wanted to make sure that the materials that i was using were uh were good quality on the roofing here's my advice okay on the roofing um i would say buy your trusses have a reputable company build trusses for you okay because a lot of people don't know how to build trusses and trusses are such an important part of your building okay i made a mistake of thinking that if i have people in my you know like come and build my roof and i buy everything that they need that would be enough but it that was not the case okay the people i had to literally sit on them when it came to quality of the trusses that they were building and they got so frustrated because i was watching everything that they were doing and and in fact i got to a point where i was tired i wasn't watching them and when i would come back and look i'm like oh my gosh this is such bad work this is just bad work so what i would say is buy your trusses have a reputable company uh build your trusses okay not only that when it comes to roofing make sure that your house is level because these people don't take they don't use levels um i ended up with a very crooked roof by the way and i'm still crying over that because my roof cost more than double what i had budgeted for and as a result um like it just pains me whenever i look at my roof and i see the imperfections they're hard to see but i can see them because that's my job and i used to tell these people that i worked in software and my job as a software engineer is to look for bugs and that's the first thing that i look at and my eye i don't even have to look at it my eye just gravitates to it and so making sure that your house is level is absolutely important and if it is not level you should tell them to stop make sure that they put a a, a beam or necessary beams to make it level before they actually put the head on otherwise you're gonna have a, a roof that's crooked forever as in my case um and i can't go back and fix it because the roof was already so expensive so to go back and fix it would literally be uh just you know like the worst thing that i can do for myself so yeah uh make sure and also when it comes to roofing uh, make sure you buy 
uh, roof sheets that are already painted. And the reason is because if you run out of paint in the middle of painting, you're kind of screwed. You're going to have a roof that has uneven color. And so you kind of want to make sure that all your materials, uh, I mean, it's easier today. Uh, and I used um, the material that I used was chroma deck, uh, chroma deck. And, um, and that material, like you can, I would suggest you get no less than 4.7 millimeters uh, or more. That way you have a more, you know, like solid material. These are the advice that I wish somebody had told me when I was building my house. But again, I'm a very brave person. I always think I can do it. And it was a big mistake to learn I can do it in a house that big. And, and also, I mean, it didn't help that I lived in America where in an area that doesn't use much, you know, like blocks and stuff. Uh, you know, like we use, uh, uh, oops, sorry, honey, flashing people. So we lived in a place that, we live in a place where we use wood to build. But American houses, even though we use wood, are superior in terms of, like, uh, the workmanship. So your house can last for a long time as long as you do, you know, like your routine maintenance. Your house, like I've been in houses that are 300 years old. So what I'm trying to say just because it's wood doesn't mean that, you know, it's uh, not well built. And so I, I assume that, you know, like the people that I would be dealing with would kind of have um, like very high caliber people. But they, you know, like they were, okay, they know how to build, obviously, but maybe not at the level that I needed for my own personal, you know, like satisfaction. And I've seen people who built beautiful homes in South Africa. And again, finding those people is very, very difficult because you always have middlemen that are always, you know, like finding new people and new people. So that's really um again my, the advice that i would give you but anyway let me close this video here because i think these are enough tips by the way comment below if you have a question and i'll respond to your question personally uh that has to do with building um and i truly appreciate all the support that i have received in the you know last few weeks I uh, again I will give you information about how much you know like I spend on things but oof, that information is very difficult to come by I've crunched numbers like over and over and over because I don't want to give you guys inaccurate information but that also means that I can not release those videos until I get you know like something that is reasonably close to what I I think things I, I know what how much I spent overall but dividing it by you know like the things that I did is very difficult because let's say things like you know cement and nails were all bought at the same time you know what I mean and uh, there's no breakdown for me to to give you right and so but yeah thank you so much for watching I truly appreciate it and uh, don't forget to like subscribe and share the video um, again, if you have specific questions, comment below. And if you like the video and tell me what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong as well, I'll truly appreciate the feedback. I really do.